To me, uh, regenerative means working with the cycles of nature, the energy cycle, the water cycle, the mineral cycle, the microbial cycle, the grazing cycle, on and on. And when those cycles operate optimally, they generate an abundance. <clears throat> and that abundance is the wealth that we all live on. I am Will Harris. I have a farm in Bluffton, Georgia called White Oak Pastures. I am the fourth generation of my family to operate it. I'm assisted today by two adult daughters and their spouses. Who, so they are the fifth generation and they've got babies that hopefully will be the sixth generation of my family to operate the farm. And I never wanted to do anything except be an industrial cattleman like my dad. I loved it but I started changing it in, in the mid nineties. And when I started changing it, I changed it very, very abruptly. And I went from making money every year to losing money for a few years. And it was, it was not sustainable. That was not going to last. Uh, I had enough equity that I survived it, but it wasn't much fun. Just purely through luck, my transition came at a very, very fortunate time. And uh, while I did lose money for a few years while I was transitioning, uh, it caught traction. And I was able to sell public supermarket and whole foods market the first pound of American grass-fed beef that they marketed as American grass-fed beef. And it was, it was a really sweet spot. Uh, they, they, they couldn't get enough. I couldn't produce enough. I put together a producer group to raise calves for me to grass finish to market to them. But that, that's, that's the 30,000 foot view of who we are and what we do. And it's really stupid for me to, to endlessly pontificate on what I think you want to hear. I'd rather just, let's have a discussion here. I'm glad to see you've got animals in here. See how they're trampling this grass. Yeah. If you weren't doing that, if you were uh, mowing it, <clears throat> not much of that plant residue would be available as microbe food. That way it is. I think it takes a long time to really understand and appreciate an ecosystem the energy cycle, mineral cycle, microbial cycle, carbs, all the cycles of nature working together to yield the abundance is the same everywhere. But the difference in the way they work together is not too subtle. There's a lot of difference in desert and tropic and mountain and valley. And if your goal is to, to optimize the the bounty, the yield, the outcome, of the operating ecosystem, the more you can understand about how it works, the more productive you can be in this operation. If you never transitioned to regenerative and you were still growing your cattle conventionally today, is there anything that anybody could possibly say or show you that would convince you? I think these farmers <clears throat> that have survived to this point, for the most part, are business people that understand the economics. <clears throat> and I think that if they're shown that their farm, their family will be better off to make the change, they would make it. The, the problem we, that I just mentioned is the, the difficulty in making that change. They are so economically, financially committed to this industrial commodity business model, that it is hard and maybe impossible to liquidate those assets and reinvest in, in another direction. What do you recommend in terms of, let's say, converting the masses to organic principles, let's say? In my country, it's peanuts, cotton, corn, all grown, uh, is monocultures in a rotation. They farm that way, their dad farm that way, their granddad farm that way, and they're told every day by 
the land grant university system, that's what you ought to be doing. And by the pesticide companies and seed companies and fertilizer companies, that's what you ought to be doing. And by the cooperative extension, that's what you ought to be doing. I mean, it is all the positive support in the world for continuing to maintain that high input monocultural system. That is made even worse by the fact that my friends and neighbors and relatives who do that uh, have, have business interest in the cotton gin, in the peanut uh, shelling plant, in the uh, corn uh, procurement, that, so they're vertically integrated. So they're even more entrenched in it. That's further exacerbated by the fact that a cotton picker costs a million dollars. A cotton picker costs a million dollars. And it won't do a damn thing but pick cotton. You talked about before, kind of farmer you were before, that you woke up every day and you looked for a problem to fix or something to kill. What do you do now every day when you're on your farm, whether it's in the morning to start your day or maybe as you're going around the ranch at the end of your day, what do you think? I believe that every species of plant or animal or microbe that exists in that ecosystem has a role. I think they're doing something that's that's beneficial for that ecosystem. And, and, and I think we probably don't, in many cases, we don't know what it is. A lot of cases we can see it. It's just clear what that benefit is. In a lot of cases, that hadn't been studied, it hadn't been figured out, <clears throat> but it's naturally occurring and it's been there for eons and probably needs to be there. And we, we drive these species into extinction when we use a pesticide or tillage, excess tillage. Side means kill, right? Homicide, that's kill. Pesticide, that's kill. Insecticide, nematicide, fungicide, you're killing stuff. And, and we've driven countless species of plants and animals and microbes into extinction or near extinction. And I think that has a huge cost. And who's, who bears that? Everybody. You know, not, not the perpetrator, everybody. You know, cattle are, so cattle are, are doing more than their part. They're allowed to, to, to raise cattle, more, more so than any other species. Knowing the cycles of nature, knowing what's going on out there, knowing that, ooh, that needs to be grazed by sheep. And there's a bunch of forbs coming up out there, getting away from me. Ooh, that needs to be grazed by goats. There's a bunch of woody species growing in there. Uh, we, for most of the year, we move the animals, the cattle, every day. We move the poultry less often, pigs less often. The cattle move pretty much every day to a different, different pile. And deciding when to move, how to move, where to move, you know, those are the kinds of decisions you make every day. It's all about keeping things alive. You got to think in a system-based way, it's not exactly, just zero on one thing. Exactly right. It's, the whole picture is what matters. The natural system is so beautiful if it's allowed to operate optimally. But when we humans choose to stop certain uh, functionalities, we, we deprive the system of its ability to disintegrate.